Let's talk about the specific tools of a lighting designer beyond the drawings that you have to make. Uh, well, that for me, that's a major tool okay. because of what my career developed into. In other words, uh, within the last two decades, uh, basically it has been the major large-scale specials, musicals, award shows, everything large in scope. That takes a great deal of planning. So the tools are, first of all, your ability to organize yourself, major tool, and the other part if, is knowledge of equipment, and that certainly comes from experience, and interest. I mean, if you're a lighting designer, you want to know everything that's out there, everything that you can adapt, everything that you can utilize or throw away, because there's always a better mousetrap. Um, film people in the past have been notorious for that. Uh, the newest widget, gadget, and so on. Uh, they may not be looking at it in a very objective manner, but they think it's the panacea for all lighting ills. Uh, the Dado light came out, you think that Dado uh, Weigert had revolutionized the industry. No, he made a special light that has limited application, but is a godsend when you need it. Well, that ability to pass judgment on the use of equipment and what you have uh, becomes part of your experience and tools. So you can't just slough off uh, the drawings or the knowledge of equipment or the most important thing, the experience. Yeah. And of course, with that coupled is your natural abilities, which you can't define. I mean, I have people come to me and say, I want to be a lighting designer, and I will have observed them as electricians or gaffers or whatever, and it's a very difficult thing for you to say, and you have to be very tactful about it, but you say uh, maybe you should consider uh, doing this in lighting design, trying to let them off easy because they won't have the understanding. I mean, I have a very good friend, Bill Lee, very, very fine lighting designer, worked for the BBC. His approach is different to mine. He wants his students to look at paintings and duplicate, and how did you do this, and how did the great artists do that. I don't think that gives you anything but understanding. I don't think that gives you enough intuitiveness to be able to go and do what Rembrandt did, or Latour, uh, Caravaggio, uh, you know, the great lighting artists. Sure, it gives you a feeling of saying, I can do that. Um, you know, part of the lighting, uh, theatrical lighting design exam is that. You took at a picture and you say, how would you light it? Right? Well, most li theatrical lighting designers don't do that anyhow. But th that ability, I think, it, it's just too fast. Even in film, you got to know what you're going to do right away. And it has to come to you in a moment. There isn't much pre-thought. Uh, but uh, so uh, it has to be done quickly. So the, there has to be something innate. And you read it within, if you read what directors of photography say, their analyzation comes like mine after you've done it. What I was trying to do there was to get the effect of the window light coming through the shutters. Usually you've hung the intro uh, in instrument and done the shutters before you've rationalized that the shutters are a part of it because it's intuitive. So maybe that explanation doesn't fit in with the academic, but that's the way I've always done it. 